Oh. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh. <laughs> I hit the button with my phone. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back uh, to our summer uh, online um, lecture demonstration series that we have here at Western Piedmont Community College. Uh, for those students of mine or potential students that are wanting to enroll in classes, uh, registration, early registration is this week for fall. If you haven't filled out your online application yet, if you're a new student, then you'll need to take care of that. We also will have another registration period in August. Um, it'll be one day. So uh, there's still time if you um, don't get that done this week, but please contact me and we'll give you my information at the end of the segment. Um, last week we uh, had the day off and um, this week I've been uh, preparing um, Dave, you want to go ahead and lift that up one more time so we can get a better shot? Yep. Okay. Yay. So um, I've been, um, as many of you know, uh, we've been talking um, about classes in the fall. Uh, some of my students have been calling, and I've been filming all of our demonstrations so you guys will have access to uh, watching demonstrations. Um, on our YouTube channel through um, throughout the semester. And I've been working on a lot of plates lately for our production pottery class. Um, so I think it's a great it's a great day to work on plates. Now, um, you'll see here, these plates are actually on plaster bats, and that's what I use in my personal studio at home. I get those from the ceramic shop in Philadelphia. And what I really like about plaster bats is the bottom um, is leather hard at the same time as the rim, and that's really important with plates. Um, they're actually incredibly easy to throw. Um, the most important part of uh, preparing for plates is preparing your clay and centering. After that, it's very minimal throwing. And then it's really a weighting game. Uh, trying to get those plates to dry uh, evenly, um, not letting the rims dry out quickly. Uh, that could cause some cracking. Um, you want to make sure that the bottom is leather hard so when you're trimming, you don't end up pushing that, um, that expanse uh, in the foot ring down. And so sometimes when you're trimming, you have to trim a little bit off and put your plate aside to dry and then bring it back and trim some more. So the way that I um, have gotten rid of a lot of that waiting game in my personal studio is to purchase um, and, and make that investment in plaster bats. So here at Western Piedmont, um, we have bats for the students to use. They're um, plastic bats and these are really nice. They're very uh, durable. Um, they don't bend with a lot of weight on them, which is really good because when you're making a plate, um, if, you're, if your bat bends when you pick it up, then the clay's probably gonna remember and it will warp. Now, some people really like that. They don't wanna have a plate be perfect, and that's okay, all right? Um, so to begin, uh, I'm just gonna throw a, a nice small plate like this. Um, this is what I, I like to eat off of for dinner. This is a three pound plate and it has a, a nice gradual um, kind of curve up and out. It doesn't have a rim. So today I'm gonna demonstrate rims for you. Um, just, um, just a continuous curve into that well. And I'm, if we have time, I brought a hump mold and I rolled a slab and I'll show you how to put a slab onto a hump mold and then um, make a ring, attach the ring, and pull a foot, okay? So let's, I was hoping these would be dry, but they're not. So we probably will get to trimming these today, okay? And so I have some, some clay prepared, and so I've got some three pound um, balls of clay. Now for those of you who take my class, um, you know that I have lots and lots of handouts. I, I give you on um, plates, um, um, sizes of plates, you know, industry standards, and then um, you guys find your way. Uh, when I started making plates a long time ago, I would um, make very extravagant dinnerware with, you know, the the um, 
the charger, the dinner plate, the salad plate, the dessert plate, the teacup plate, the bread plate. <laughs> and so um, my husband and I really, uh, and my two-year-old, we don't eat that way. So really, um, for us, uh, really we just need um, a basic, you know, 10-inch dinner plate uh, that suits us just fine and um, we're happy, you know, we don't need all the extra fluff. But I, I really appreciate the, you know, beautiful display when you lay out a, a nice dinnerware set and it's all handmade. And so um, I think that it's a great, it's a great way of working and, and making all those different parts and stuff. And so if that's something that maybe I'll revisit one day because it is really cool to see. set your calipers at 10 inches 
and see if you set them against your clay that you just centered, I'm almost there. I'm almost to that 10 inches, okay? So um, I'm wondering if I grabbed the four pound ball. Nope. <laughs> so um, I'm actually um, really moving some clay already. So this might actually be a little bit bigger, but remember the clay will shrink. Okay, so I checked my measurement. Now I'm gonna make a hole and I'm gonna pull the clay out it toward my belly button. And I'm just gonna use my thumb and I'm pressing on my thumb as I'm pulling out. Now, as I did that, the clay um, pushed any air out that might have gotten sucked up under it, okay? Now, sometimes when you open up a plate, um, the, the uh, rim is a little wonky and you have to bring it back into center. So you just wanna take your left thumb and your um, pointer finger, your middle finger, hold um, your ring finger and then press down, okay? So we're gonna um, hold it and press and just let everything come back into center. Now, um, sometimes what happens when um, you're opening up is you made your hole, but then as you're pulling, you start actually pressing down instead of floating across that clay. Remember, when you make a hole in your um, centered clay, you're determining how thick that bottom is going to be, and you need to you need to stick with that decision. And so from that hole on, your fingers are going to move straight across. You don't wanna start digging down because what happens is you'll get a thin spot and you'll get a crack, okay? Now there's no way, glaze is not going to fill cracks, okay? If you get cracks in your plate, that's it. They're glaze tests or you wanna throw them away. Um, they're not, the glaze isn't going to fill those. Okay, so now I'm going to compress and um, if there is any high spots, you can, you know, kind of move them out a little bit. Sometimes when you're making a flat well, um, there seems to be like an optical illusion that makes the well look like it's raising up in the middle. So if you uh, seem to have that problem, you can always do a nice, um, finger swoosh, uh, a nice spiral, that sometimes helps with that. Um, but I, don't worry too much. Um, if there is a high spot intentionally in the middle, you know, that might be because you're, um, the kind of food that you like to serve um, calls for liquids to maybe be um, spread out throughout instead of all piling in the middle, I don't know. <laughs> I've always read that um, saucy foods like to have a well that um, dips in the middle so that all the sauces accumulate there. Okay, so I'm just compressing. And now what I'm gonna do is um, a pull straight up. Now, uh, do not pull the clay um, and keep pulling until it's super thin, okay? you want to leave enough clay in this rim so when you spread the clay out with your rib, um, as those clay particles spread, they don't get super thin and then collapse and you have a nice rounded uh, rim that isn't going to chip, you know, on someone's counter or when you put it in the dishwasher, what have you. So I'm just gonna use um, this gripping motion and I'm gonna pull the clay up, press, pull the clay up. Now, gently slow the wheel. Um, if I haven't said that, we're not centering anymore and you don't want the force of this wheel to like throw the clay out. Also, remember when you go from um, a, a form that's not as wide as a plate, sometimes you have to hold your rotation a little bit longer you know, because if not, you'll end up skipping a row and then one side will be um, wider than the other. Okay, so at this point, you don't want to get all the way down at the wheel head and bring that clay um, up. You wanna leave clay 
um, at the very bottom because when I lay that rim down, I need that clay to support the rim. Okay, if you don't do that, your, your rim is gonna um, maybe collapse, okay? So I can pull just above that line and I'm just gonna start doing a shaping pull. Now, this is a really great baking dish I've created. Um, you can, this is how you're gonna make um, pie plates, but those will be uh, flat bottom. You won't have anything to trim. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is um, press down with my rib. Just wanna do a little bit of perfecting here. Okay. So I'm gonna go down with my rib. I'm gonna lay that rim down. I'm going at an angle and then stop. And then I'm gonna readjust because this, this plate has a rim. So it's got a decorative border. And I'm just gonna go back and do one more press and release. Now, because I ribbed this shape out, it's gonna probably pick up a little bit as it's drying. Uh, just so you know, like if you have super flat rims and you come back and they've pulled up, it's because of that. Um, okay. Just want to go ahead and just work right there where the well meets the rim. Just want to make sure that's nice and clean. The great thing about plates is um, decorating them. It's so much fun. So you want to make sure that you get your wooden knife and you create a clean line to guide your wire, okay? Where did I put my wire? Oh, did my wire always runs off from me. Okay. So uh, when you're making really big plates and platters, you may have to take your splash pan off. Um, the worst thing you can do is pick up before you see the wire come out the other side and make sure that you gently turn the wheel as you cut. Okay, now I see the wire and I can pick up. Now, um, after you make your plate, uh, do not um, plop it down onto a hard surface or it's gonna slump on one side. As you can see, it has like a, a nice growing kind of um, outside profile. It doesn't have a right angle. Okay, we need to, that extra clay that I said, don't go after that last pull. That clay is supporting this curve. All right, so that's a, a rim. Does anyone have questions about making a rim? Okay, so I'll just put this in with my other plate. Gently lay it down. Okay, so let's move on to maybe, um, I have some four and a half pound balls of clay. Oh, I didn't check my measurements. Oopsies. Oh, good, I just did the perfect thing to show you. Okay, let's say you put your plate down and you mess it up. It's okay, just put it back on the wheel. plenty in the foot 
And so now I have a four and a half pound ball of clay. So this is gonna make about a third, or about a, a 12 um, to 14 inch, but let's say 12 and a half inch plate. So this is really good practice um, for uh, my beginner class. You guys all have to make plates. And it's a great way to learn how to center larger amounts of clay, okay? So uh, in the intro class, you do make a lot of plates. Um, and that's for the end of the semester. And then of course, in our production pottery class, you make your own dinnerware set. And uh, that's always a lot of fun too, okay? So again, we're not gonna, we're not gonna center this super high. And then I get my whole body over it. All right, so I'm gonna make my hole. And then I'm gonna open up. So I've got my thumb and I'm pulling my thumb out. And then if you end up getting um, kind of two um, donuts with a little split, you can just, again, just marry those together with that pinching and pressing. You have to do that anyways, because when you open up a plate, a lot of times it knocks the rim off center. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and compress. Now on this plate, I'm gonna make a nice continuous curve. Um, I can go ahead and set my calipers to 12 inches. Eeps! Need my bigger calipers. This one will work. Or you can just use your ruler. Okay. So what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm gonna do a pull up and out. On the last one, I did a pull straight up. So then when I laid it down, I had a definite definition between the well and the rim. This one, my first pull is kind of up and out, okay? Now, I don't wanna go after that last pull. No, no matter how tempting it is, don't go after that last pull at the very bottom, okay? Because you need that to support the curve. So my pull starts above that in the bottom and I was only pulling this stuff up here now this is such an easy way of making you know this is how you're gonna make a, a, a pie plate too okay except you wouldn't rip it out all right so I'm gonna start at the rim press down and then right where the bottom meets the wall I'm gonna press and get this profile with my rib press I got that profile and then I just bring it on into the middle. So um, I am using a metal rib that has a curved surface, um, a curved corner I mean. If you're using a regular metal rib it does have that that, that sharp um, corner and a lot of times um, people will end up um, you know scratching their clay in the bottom with it or gouging it. So um, I liken it to if you're a surfer or a snowboarder you want to keep your the, you know, you, you don't want to eat it. You want to keep your, um, the front of your board up, okay? You want to, like, just when you're using your rib, you just want to kind of press so just the, the edge kind of tilts upward. So I'm going to come back in one more time, really pressing where that um, clay, where the wall meets the well, and I can press all I want right there because I left that clay in the very bottom. Okay. So when you're making plates, you're really worried about only the inside because you're gonna trim um, the outside. Drying plates is really fast. What takes the most time is when you're trimming. Make sure to go back over that rim and just kind of tighten it up a little bit with a gentle compression. 
stoppers that fit right on top of your back pins. Um, when you're using a hump mold, um, you can uh, lock it down also onto your wheel head with clay. You, you don't have to purchase one. You can make your own. And some of my favorite hump molds are actually just plates that have been trimmed round. And um, then you can even um, stamp them or you can um, carve them and so that carving will be on the inside of your plate. Now what we want to do um, is go ahead, this um, plate, this can be a flat bottom plate. You don't have to add a foot to it but I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I am going to measure where they've already determined that this foot is going to be in the mold. Okay, So I have that measurement because once I put the slab over it, I'm not going to be able to see that. When you're using um, bisque molds or plaster molds, you have to wet them down or the um, clay will instantly start drying when it is put onto that surface and it won't stick and you won't be able to have it stick long enough to actually work it. Um, when I'm using bisque molds, actually dip them in water. They dry really fast and they're super light and that's why I like using bisque molds the most. So I've rolled a slab of clay. And I've actually cut it round. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get this over to the edge and then peel this off. Now I removed the canvas um, texture on the side that's touching the mold just because I don't want that canvas texture. Um, I want it to be nice and smooth and then if I want to put a texture I'll add one or um, I will you know just leave it nice and smooth so that I can um, do some brush work. Remember plates are wonderful to decorate. Okay so what you want to do is work from inside to out because you don't want to trap air. If you have a little poocher, um, a um, bag of sand, and then wrap a handkerchief around it, that's always also something that you can use to kind of tap these things on. So I just tapped it on, and then I'm going to use my wooden knife. Um, don't use metal on plaster. And I'm just going to cut the extra clay off. Okay, so always, it's, it's really good to go ahead and check and just make sure no plaster got into your clay because remember, plaster will cause pop-outs later. 
Um, if you end up getting plaster in the clay, just pick that part out and throw it away. Okay, so I'll probably go back and trim again. Um, so what I want to do is work from the middle, kind of pressing down gently and going out. Now, I actually did get a little bit of an air bubble, and so what you want to do is just get your needle tool. Oh, where's the needle tool? Oh, here it is. Oh, it feels like a Monday, but it's a Tuesday. Weird. Okay, so just uh, tap a bunch of little holes, and then you can actually hear them popping. You don't want air, so it's going to mess you up when you try to add your foot. I prefer to just kind of um, smooth and pop the air bubble that way instead of continually pressing on it. Okay, so this plate could be done right now. It has a nice flat bottom. You don't have to add a foot. But um, what I did is, just to show you this great little trick, um, I learned this from David McDonald. Um, you can throw a ring and then apply it, or you can take a ball of clay, and um, I just measured a pound so you guys know how much this is. And um, remember when you were forced to make all those pinch pots and you thought it was never gonna be a skill you would ever use again? Now you're going to. So we're going to put a hole into the middle and we're going to actually go all the way through, okay? So I have really long fingers. A pound of clay might be really big. Um, if you've got smaller hands, I, I'm sure a half a pound even would work for this, okay? But um, so now what I'm gonna do is actually pinch this donut. So as I'm pinching the clay, it has to go somewhere, it's spreading. So it's getting longer and you wanna make sure that you're moving slowly and you don't skip any rows. It's the same as when you're throwing, right? If you squeeze it on this side, you have to squeeze it in the round, okay? So I'm just gonna keep on opening up this donut and I'm turning it. So a lot of times my students are like, well, I can't do something because I'm left-handed. The thing about being a potter is you just kind of become ambidextrous, okay? Um, you'll do something with both hands. Um, it's just become second nature to you. So I'm just opening up this ring. And then I want to check I'm almost there. So I need to open a little bit more. So for those of you who want to have a nice tall pedestal plate, um, maybe you want to use that pedestal plate um, with a, you know, a cake. So you can throw um, a tall foot off of it so you have a nice cake stand. All right, I think I need just a little bit more. So this kind of saves you from having to take this off of your wheel head and throw a ring and then put it back on and put the ring on. Um, you can roll, you can roll a coil and put it on. The thing that's hard about when you roll a coil is that you're, you have to deal with the attachment and the, the end and how they meet and sometimes it's not very clean and then when you try to wheel through um, and pull through that it can be a thin spot so this kind of eliminates that. Okay so now that this is set perfectly on there don't add water yet. So now we have to smooth so what I'm doing is, is I'm just taking I'm just stealing a little bit of clay from this ring and I'm just pressing it down into my form. So I'm going to get that sealed on. No, I'm not stealing. I'm appropriating some clay from my ring into my body. Now, you have to be careful cuz Remember when you're when you're touching the clay, it's spreading. Sometimes it's gonna want to move off. So you might have to actually like press and seal it on 
and then go around so it doesn't start lengthening on you. It started doing that to me just now. So, okay. Now I'm just going to do the same thing on the inside. Now um, I'm taking the plane, I'm moving down with my finger. If I just sealed where that um, crack is, I could trap air. So this is, so I, I think I'm starting to eliminate that possibility. And notice that I have counter pressure. Um, remember, you should always try to have counter pressure. Whenever you're touching the clay, you should um, be supporting on the outside or the inside. Okay, so now um, I'm gonna have to do a centering kind of groupie. <laughs> so like David McDonald said, the animals go through the fence, don't let them jump out the top, okay? So um, pinch and press, okay? So we're pinching and pressing, bringing this into round. And I'm almost letting my thumb and my finger just kind of at the bottom as I'm pinching just spread out a little bit and cleaning up that attachment on the inside and out. Okay. Now, I'm not done yet. Okay, so this is a huge foot and the chances of it blowing up are pretty good, I think. So what we need to do is thin it out. We can thin it out by cutting it off with our needle tool, which I think it would be really good for us to do a refresher on that. Or I'm going to pull it up and I'm gonna create more of a pedestal uh, display plate, okay? So what I'm gonna do is pull the clay up. So I'm just using that pinching pull and I have this nice rounded end. I'm gonna go back and do another pull. Now let's say you messed up and you wanna cut it off. Okay, um, you want to hold the needle tool on your thumb. So you're holding the ring, you hold the needle tool on your thumb, you don't gouge it, you gently create a guideline and then you start to, instead of pushing in forward, go a little bit at the side. You'll come all the way through for one full rotation with it touching this finger, your pointer finger, and then you can just pull it off, okay? Now, uh, you're never going to just shave off a high spot. You have to take an entire ring, okay? So I'm gonna rest it on my thumb, go through, and when through one full time, I pull it off, okay? So if you have to do that, that's how you do it, all right? So let's go ahead and clean that up after I cut that off. You can always go back and trim this um, and maybe um, create you know, some line work or something. Okay, so this is going to stay on here until it pops off, obviously. And um, because the plaster will be absorbing, um, it should be leather hard, uh, the foot should be leather hard at the same time as the uh, top of the plate. It really doesn't matter if I peel this off. If for some reason, peeling that cut clay off right now would actually destroy your um, plate, don't worry about it because the plaster is gonna absorb and when it starts to dry, you'll be able to peel that clay off really easy, okay? So, I could have even flared that more. It's, it's a little vertical um, for me. The nice thing about having um, a foot that changes direction, I should say, the nice thing about having a lot of clay to create a foot that changes direction um, assures you that it's not gonna look like the form is crushing that foot. So when you do a change of direction foot, you wanna make sure you have enough clay there to either trim or um, flare it outward and throw it. So does anyone have any questions for me today? All right, well, thank you for joining me. And uh, next week 
we'll have a new form to talk about. And um, our summer series is almost over, so um, make sure that if you want to get in touch with me, um, you follow the information Dave's going to present to you. And thank you guys. I'll see you next Tuesday at 11 o'clock. Okay, and for our contact information, we have that right here. Uh, you can email Courtney directly at clong at wpcc.edu, or you can access it through Western Piedmont Community College homepage, which is wpcc.edu. Uh, fall registration dates are listed there. And don't forget to tune in next week. Catch Courtney again, and then after that, we'll be back to the Wood Program.